It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Yesterday on my podcast, I pretty much talked about how critical race theory is actually being endorsed by a school union, which pretty much is comprised of different teachers, and they all agree that critical race theory is pretty much going to be taught in all 50 states if they want to. And of course, here's a snippet from the video that I recorded yesterday for my podcast to give you guys an example of what I talked about. Now, this comes directly from like the National Education Association. Let's see, the NEA will with guidelines on implementation from the NEA presidents and chairs of the Ethnic Minorities Affairs Calisys will share and publicize through existing channels information already available on critical race theory, what is and what is not have a team of staffers for members who want to learn more and fight back against anti-critical race theory rhetoric and share information with other NEA members, as well as their community members. Provide an already created in-depth study that critiques empire, white supremacy, anti-blackness, anti-indigenous, racism, patriarchy, cis patriarchy, capitalism, ableism, oh my God, all these sort of like buzzers we're saying right now, and other forms of barriers and oppression at the intersects of our society, and we must oppose attempts to ban critical race theory or the 19th, let's see, the 1619, yeah, the 1619 project, sorry. Let's see, uh, publicly through existing media, convey its support for the accurate, honest teaching of social studies topics, including truthful, age appropriate accountings of unpleasant aspects of American history, such as slavery and the oppression and the discrimination of indigenous, black, brown, and other peoples of color, as well as the continued impact this country has on our current society. The association will further convey that in these teaching these topics, it is reasonable and appropriate for a curriculum to be informed by academic framework for understanding and interpreting the impact of the past on current society, including critical race theory. Let's see, uh, D join with Black Lives Matter at school and the Zen Education Project to call for a rally this year on October 14th, George Floyd's birthday, as a national day of action to teach lessons about structural racism and oppression, followed by one day of action that recognizes and honors lives such as Breonna Taylor, the castle name, of, I cannot pronounce the other word, and the other people. The National Education Association shall publicize the National Days of Action to all its members, including the NEA today. You know, it's kind of funny. They literally said right here that they want to put critical race theory in our school. And not just that, though. They literally said that they want to put Black Lives Matter at school, too. So... What in the fuck? Like, so they have critical race theory plus Black Lives Matter. Like, it's so, it's not, is it really hard to ask, like, you know, the teachers or school districts or whatever to stay neutral on these topics? Really? Like, this is like a perfect argument, of course, for like homeschool. I'm dead serious. Like, homeschool or private school or anything else other than public school. Naturally, of course, after the recording of the podcast, I found other stories in which teachers openly admitting to wanting to teach critical race theory at schools and these various type of articles, which I'm going to talk about right now. Critical race theory high school instructor warns students not to talk about the class to anyone as part of the critical race theory teaching sponsored by Pisa Hunt in first book, one South Carolina high school teacher was revealed telling students not to talk about the contents of her class outside of that class. Sahari Reveals Davis is a South Carolina teacher that works in what she calls an alternative school. She explains that her school focuses on children and teens that have been in the system, suspended, and expelled, and focuses on getting these students back on track rather than focus them out on the streets. 
The second semester is when Reveals Davis says she'll talk about like stuff relevant to these students' lives, usually around social inequalities. Reveals Davis says that the first class she's taught regarding social justice they set up brown rules, drawing from the book Long Way Down, which talks about the three rules of the neighborhood in the beginning of the book. The rules outlined it in the book were no crying, no snitching, and get revenge. She goes on to set up the classroom's own three rules of the neighborhood based upon these three rules. And the most eyebrowing raising rule, the no snitching rule, was changed into what is said in this class stays in this class. Thousands of teachers plagued to break anti-critical race theory laws. More than 5,000 educators have signed a petition vowing to break an anti-critical race theory laws being considered in multiple state legislators as the controversial curriculum faces a revoking in districts across the country. The Zen Education Project launched the effort in June and singled out proposed legislation in 21 states which the signers pled to violate should they become law. A statement attached to the pledge reads, the major institutions and systems of our country are deeply infected with anti-blackness and its intersect with other forms of oppression. To not acknowledge this and help students understand the roots of U.S. racism is to deceive them. The pledge states, we, the unsigned educators, refuse to lie to young people about U.S. history and current events, regardless of the law. What can I personally conclude from these three breaking stories about critical race theory? Number one, the whole idea, the argument that critical race theory is not being taught in school is now debunked for good. Now, of course, before like this argumentation, it was already debunked, but now we have tangible evidence that teachers want to teach critical race theory irregardless of what the law had to say with the matter by these sort of, you know, people in charge of the local state governments. So, this whole entire argument is completely destroyed. And number two, I find it so strange that the third story that I just read out loud has to do with, of course, like teaching about American history. Now, most Americans do not oppose the teaching American history. Like, critical race theory is way different than American history. And so to conflate American history with critical race theory, to me, makes no sense. But what also makes no sense, however, is that some of these activists, like one of them in particular that I'm going to talk about for this video, is actually pushing some sort of state religion of its own. Of course, I'm talking about Charlie Kirk for this video. It's not enough to just oppose critical race theory. Republican governors, legislators, school board members, and parents need to play offense. Push for the Bible to be taught in school. Push for prayer in school. Push for pro-America curriculums. Push Marxism on the defense. And this argument right here pretty much just lost me. It just completely lost me. And I guess for this video, I'm becoming a bit of a dirty centrist per se, because honestly, that is like a crazy idea. A really, really crazy idea. Now, why is it a crazy idea to me? Now, first and foremost, I first want to state that obviously, I am in fact against critical race theory used as indoctrination towards kids on the, gr on the basis, of course, that is actually against the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which pretty much states that she cannot discriminate against those with a different race or sexuality or whatever. I think, of course, on that basis, it should in fact be banned because it's an ideology that is pushed towards kids and I don't believe that ideologies should be pushed towards kids. At the same time, Dale, I don't think, of course, that using a Bible or a state prayer would actually, you know, help anything at all. Because why would I say that? Well, the main reason why I say that is because within the First Amendment, of the Constitution, it pretty much has something of the Establishment Clause, which pretty much, of course, the state cannot enforce any type of religion within the classroom. So that means, of course, that 
They cannot have state prayers. They cannot force the Bible in school. So basically, the schools had to be secular. And on that basis, I'm against state religion and state prayer. So this whole entire idea of substituting one religion like critical race theory to another religion, which is Christianity, I'm sorry, that is stupid. That is like really, really stupid. I'm against having both religions in school. The school should be completely separated from both religions. I'm sorry. This right here is pretty much known as, of course, horseshoe theory, where pretty much the extremes on both sides of the argument pretty much, of course, look exactly alike. Honestly, this idea to push one religion from the far left, critical race theory, to replace it with Christianity, that is crazy. That is like, you know, really, really crazy to me. And so, I think, of course, the state should be neutral on these matters. Yes, teach about, of course, like, you know, American history. I guess the only kind of exception for the Bible to be in school is maybe like some sort of religious class in high school where it teaches like all the religions at the same time in a neutral setting. That's the only probably exception I probably would have for like, you know, religion in the school. But otherwise, it should be completely neutral. The state should be completely neutral of any religion, the far left kind or the Christian kind. But um, yeah, that is so strange, man. That is really strange. And of course, Ian Mao Chung has this to say. While it used to be the adverse to having religion taught in school, I see no alternative to resisting the onslaught of nihilism or the religion of critical race theory. Nihilism is inherently secular, and the only way to resist it is through an ideology with moral grounding. I agree with Charlie Kirk. Also the same Ian Mao Chung, base, and underneath that tweet, he pretty much have this whole entire news article which says, New, China reportedly terminated all public WeChat accounts created and run it by LGBT plus groups at Chinese colleges and feminist organization and an overnight crackdown. Look guys, I find it so strange that the, some of these people who claim to be opposed against like, you know, something that they oppose end up being the opposite extreme of what they oppose, if that makes any sense. Because honestly, I do in fact believe that the fight, that the push for critical race theory is of course a noble cause. I totally agree with that. At the same time, I don't agree on replacing critical race theory with patriotism or replacing critical race theory with Christianity. Like the schools should never, ever have any sort of ideological base for anybody. All schools have to do is just teach history, teach math, teach English, teach the foreign language stuff, just any school topic instead of pushing a far left ideology or the religious ideology for Christianity. But anyway, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.
everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's 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 everyone's friend.